Members of the Council, uh, congratulations, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Vice Chairman, on your appointments. I want to say before I get started that I'm in favor of a big raise for all the councilmen. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, How much? Whatever you guys oh. need is what we need to do. <laughs> I want to say this, that if you guys were going to be making a decision about a business, a business decision, and the business was of the city, and that's the decision you were going to make, you'd want to make the most prudent, careful, wise decision that you could make. And you'd want to solicit, if you could, available to you, the best business judgment that could be provided. And what better than John O'Helmerich, Mr. Wanamaker, and the businessmen that have come up to tell you this is a bad idea. At that consortium of business people that were going to advise you, Mr. Bates wouldn't be present because I don't think he runs a business or has been successful in business. But when you look at business judgment, like Mr. Christensen runs a business, you say, is this going to get me down the way any farther by taking this action, or is this going to kill the golden goose that laid the egg? And the answer is, it's going to kill the golden goose that lays the egg. You got, how, what did our uh, convention bureau say, $140 million pouring into Tulsa? from this gem. Now, the careful work that Mr. Bates points out that was given to you as a study, on one hand, points out that how deplorable the fairgrounds were in 1998. It's so bad that uh, it's an eyesore for many. It's not now. It's beautiful. It's a gem. It's a Tulsa absolute crown jewel. Oh, they fail to mention that, but then he goes on to say that this gentleman, Mr. Bledsoe, apparently has met with the Arabian people and has toured other facilities to compare them to Tulsa. Not. As a matter of fact, Tulsa has a fantastic facility. And you know what it's done to get that Arabian show? It's gone out and recruited and met and hustled and promised and tried to get them here numerous times, going back and forth to Louisville to get them here. You know what they said when they found out about the idea of a 3% sales tax increase? Wait a minute. That may breach our contract. We need to get a legal opinion on that. Now, we only have a three-year deal with you, Tulsa. In spite of the fact that you're going to accommodate 3,600 horses and you're going to bring, we're going to bring $40 million to Tulsa, you're changing the deal. Excuse me, can I ask a question? That, yes. It's, it's real important. It's not going to count my time, is it? No. I'll oh. stop the clock, no. Mark. You're an attorney, is that correct? That's, that's correct. How would, how would our action breach a contract that the county has with the Arabian Horse Show? I'd asked Councilor or Commissioner Miller that several weeks ago and okay. she promised me... You're asking my legal advice? I frankly you're think... You're on the fair board, right? Right. Okay. My I legal think, advice... Are you familiar with the contract? I am. Okay. The Thanks. terms of that contract provides very specifically what their vendors would pay as, as a matter of tax. It, it, which, they, which that, paragraph that's your, Clark, which paragraph are you referring to? The contract? Yeah, which paragraph? They're familiar with our website. They're familiar with the tax uh, setup. I'm okay. reading your contract now okay. with the Arabian Horse Show. Which right. paragraph do you say references? I don't have that contract before me, but yeah, you and I read it. It's not there. It is. It's contained within the contractual terms with regard to what they would expect their vendors to pay, Mr. Inkleton. Have you read the section called Other Terms? I have read the entire contract. Have you read paragraph 20 of other terms? I have read the entire contract. The contract already subordinates the Raven Horse Show to the ordinances of Tulsa All right, on Mr. the face Clinton, listen, of the contract. Listen, maybe we'll retain you to represent us when we get into litigation with them. They're getting a legal opinion and they're entitled to do so. Gentlemen, you may have a legal opinion that's different from them. Gentlemen, gentlemen, but dog on, why put us in that position? Let's be civil with this, please. Okay, I'm trying to be civil. I'm saying you're making a terrible decision. As a businessman that's charged with the business of this city, why would you jeopardize that show? Why would you jeopardize Mr. Wanamaker's show? Why would you jeopardize the boat show? <clears throat> you can handle the police and security that will be necessary out there now. For the fair alone, we got 80 volunteers from the Tulsa uh, uh, Sheriff's Reserve Patrol. You won't find those with the city. This gentleman points out that that $24 paid by the vendors to a, a Tulsa police officer, that costs the city of Tulsa. That's a moonlighting amount. For officers that are out there working and hustling and trying to make extra money, it has nothing to do with anything costing the city of Tulsa. Frankly, the point is this. We have something that's working. 
You've got a fair board that's interacting with the people. Uh, Councillor Barnes, if you had been present the other night for the neighborhood meeting, very, very few people of your constituency. Don't bring that up because I could not be there. Oh, no, 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 I'm I know. Here. It was a conflict. I didn't I suggest. Okay, I'm please. not suggesting that it wasn't anything other than a conflict with your council duties. But if you could have been there, you would have saw the 80 people plus that showed up. Wait, no, no. It was taped, and I watched it okay. full length yesterday. Good. And I'll have to disagree with you. I didn't see 80 people there. Well, 